Welcome to the new Mercedes GLA 250. I came here to make this iPhone 6 video review of the GLA 250. You notice this car right away because of the uh, the uh, head, the rear uh, lights were larger than usual on a smaller vehicle, but you notice this car right away. It's got some very sharp looks. Look how wide this car is. That thing's that's a crazy, that's an amazing car. Very nice. All right. So it looks like it's got space for that many. So basically, you open this up. This is exactly what you see in the uh, CLA. So these are the this is the old quality of materials. Like for instance, you don't see a headrest button like you see in the new C class. Unlock and lock buttons like the new S class. But uh, overall, good. Really nice. Very nice. Let's see. Is it? Oh, power. Oh, okay. This one has a manual. Manual steering wheel set. Okay, so. Okay, and one thing I have to say Mercedes new cars, all of them are so ridiculously spacious. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, and by the way, I'm shooting at 1080p, 60 frames per second. So this is how much space I have in a GLA. Uh, let me lock that in. Boom, there we go. So that's me. I got plenty of uh, knee space. If I lounge out in my chair, lounged out, really nice and lounged out, I can have this inexpensive GLA. Now this is what the back looks like when the uh, hatchback is open. So take a good look at that. The rear seat looks like it has probably about enough headroom for me so long as I slouch while I sit. Obviously, because I'm such a tall person, I can't, like, if you look at the top of my head, because I'm such a tall person, obviously, obviously, this this is a smaller car. Like, for instance, let's say that you've been hit really hard by the economy. And let's say you don't have the credit or you don't have enough money to get yourself one of those $56,000 MLAs. Or the, I'm sorry, ML classes. All these letters are so confusing. But let's say you don't have enough money to get yourself an ML. But you want to be just like mommy and you want to have an ML so that you could show everybody you're a rich woman. Well, this is what you'd get. you get yourself a GLA. So you spend a little bit less money, but you don't end up feeling like you're broke. This is that GLA. Same materials that you noticed in the CLA. Now, the problem, however, I do see, you know, all of those people who are like, oh yeah, Mercedes, you shouldn't be making cars like that and allowing people to buy inexpensive cars. Oh, you you should be, everything should cost 50,000 and 60,000 or higher. You know, the one thing that I will say, and, and I will acknowledge some of the haters of the inexpensive brands of Mercedes, the inexpensive brand names. The one thing I will say is that materials like this, you expect to see in Hyundai. When you get into a C-Class, a new C-Class, and you see the materials that they're putting in that C-Class at 50,000, you really kind of don't expect to have levels of plastic like this. Now granted, everything still looks good, and granted, it still says Mercedes-Benz on the back. But um, it, it's a trade-off to, to give you lesser feeling materials. They had to uh, cut back. So this is the command knob. Obviously, just like the CLA, nothing, nothing new here. Command knob allows you to um, scroll through the nav map. Let's go. You can go back, push the back button. Hopefully, you can see the whole thing. Push the back button, and uh, the back button takes you to uh, different places. Now, if you want to move the map and you want to select a destination, you have to move this knob. It's a little annoying considering, like, like for instance, I want to go to Oceanside, right? I want to go right there in Oceanside. I go there, and then I push the button boom once and it says yeah what do you want to do do you want to go there so if i want to set that as a destination i say yeah give me that as a destination and ask you what do you want to do it's a it's a straightforward interface it's exactly like ipod's click wheel it's very straightforward very easy to use and um when you move this button up 
you can also see how if you've never used a Mercedes before it's very easy to get to things like your phone video system and uh, let you see uh, things about the car when the car is activated and this that and other it's very 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 straightforward no surprises no surprises at all so if you've tested a CLA class you already know exactly what to expect my criticism still comes from the fact that it, it takes a while to get used to uh, having a nav screen that looks like this because normally whenever you see something like that it looks like it was added on later it looks like a um, what is it called an aftermarket add-on I expect to see everything built right into the dash because once you get used to an S class you don't you everything looks lesser if it's not designed like that most new cars Lexus whatever most new cars do the same thing they build this right into the top but there's a new government uh, regulation that says that any of these displays have to be as high to the driver site as possible so this way you don't look down as much I can understand why they did it but you know some people are gonna criticize some people are gonna say it looks cheap one thing I will say is it makes it easier to take this off and put either the the, um, the larger model on or the smaller model so you know that means that it's easier to maintain other than that it's a pretty uh, straightforward car let's take a look at the back I'm gonna stop and pause the well I'm gonna stop the video and then I'll restart it so this way I don't lose anything I don't want to corrupt the file by it. okay okay so I'm out let's open up the back see what kind of space is here so you can see there's not a, there's not a lot of space in here now if you're if you're some little rich woman and you don't need anything as big as the ML then we could you could you could get this and you could be passable with this you know this is great for little soccer mom who's only got like one or two kids and uh, you know or a divorcee or something or a widower you know when it's not four of you this car gets amazingly spacious but if there's only uh, one or two of you you know you'll you'll, you'll ride in style You'll ride uh, comfortably. Yeah. dealing with like V6s or V8s here, you're dealing with like a turbocharged four cylinders and whatnot. So. Nice lighting. Everything's everything's you know it's 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 nothing you don't expect. I mean it's it's simple, it's nice there's nothing, um, there's nothing uh, surprising about it. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Lighting is simple. It's, it, you know, nothing radical. Straightforward, good looking car, straightforward. The problem with the GLA or the CLA is when you first come to a Mercedes-Benz dealer, you see the C-Class first. And when you see the C-Class or you see the S-Class and the E-Class and you see the use of these materials in these cars, at that point, what you want is you want this. Look at this interior. This is a C-Class. All of the C-Classes, the new C-Classes, 2015s look like this. You know, I have a friend who had tested a C-Class and she didn't like it at all because, you know, the interior was a lot cheaper, more plastic, it wasn't exciting. But now, they're building this. Now, all these materials look fantastic. Now, you get a command system and you get materials that look exactly like what you find in an S-Class. And when you got materials like that, you suddenly don't want anything else. This is gorgeous, isn't it? The new 2015 C-Class is really an S-Class in 
a smaller package. Now, the only downside is because the S-Class has a naturally aspirated V8 engine, it's also quieter on the road than the C-Class is. The uh, twin turbo engines that they're putting in these cars are loud, you know. And uh, I've complained about that numerous times. And it's not that they're just loud, it's that they're loud in a way that I don't like. Meanwhile, if you, the only twin turbo V6 I've heard that really sounds good is a Nissan GTR. Other than that, everything sounds like you're, you're in a blender grinding, grinding in it. I mean, look at these materials, look at that. That's that, that beautiful. I don't like the grinding sound. But anyway, that's a C class. And the CLA, where's the CLA? There's a CLA, CLA. And when you get in the CLA, then you recognize right away, you see the, the downgrade in the materials in the car. Well, I really shouldn't say there's a downgrade, but it's just not as nice as what you find in the C-Class. You know, but that's what it is. So, um... Man, I gotta say, 60 frames a second looks fantastic. This is a uh, C-Class. And this is the, the richer looking walnut cashmere style interior. Most of you have already seen this, so I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about it. Digital zoom. Yeah, so it's got those same light fixtures like everything else that Mercedes has. Good looking car. Oh, somebody brought a Kia Cadenza to a Mercedes-Benz dealer. Wow. 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 You brought a Kia Cadenza to a Mercedes-Benz dealer. Get a man. Yeah. Oh, it has a button? Yeah. Some kind of sensor. Oh, okay, I see. It's got a little push button sensor. Oh, and it keeps going up. Oh, snap, you can make it go up more. There's like an auto stop. And there's the main button right there. Yeah, that's a standard feature in just about everything now. I love that. So, can I make it? Can I make it in there? Or do I have to put the seat up a little? Everybody is swooning over the GLA and the CLA. You see, the thing about it is, with being, I get into a lot of arguments about which, oh my God, about which cell phone is better. The thing about it is, you know, Americans have become a bunch of badge whores. And it's not just Americans, Europeans, badge whores, Chinese people, badge whores, definitely. We've become a bunch of bad whores, and badge whores demand certain name brands, and they see that other name brands don't have equity. Now, the back of this thing is definitely not for me. It's a really nice car. You know, it's got the same vinyl, like, it, it has the same vinyl feel that all of the other cheap cars has. There's nothing wrong with vinyl because it's easy to keep clean. The problem comes... You know, if you have these dark colors, the dark colors look cheap, unless you have a very good designer. The dark colors really do look cheap, you know? I'm trying to reach up there, move the seat up a little. But uh, the back of this thing, my God, look at my head. Back of this thing, my head's right through the roof. So yeah, I'm six foot six or so. This is the view out the back. See that? That's the view out the back. So some people might say, oh, there's not enough rear visibility. In my opinion, it's not bad. It's it's about, it's it's what you expect. It's about what you expect. But um, this vinyl, these dark colors, and, um, and, and these real, now I understand some people actually like that, but in these expensive vehicles, you expect to see more cashmeres, more nut colors like brown. And you expect to see uh, tans and this, that, and other. But uh, overall, I, I'm, you know, this is exactly what you'd expect out of a crossover made out of a CLA. Or this is exactly what you'd expect from a crossover designed similar to the CLA. The materials look the same as the CLA. And uh, everything else, 
everything else, the feel of the car is a lot like the CLA. But uh, it's a shame that uh, to break the price barrier, you have to accept so many downgrades in material feel. But um, overall, it, it seems like a decent car. And, and from what I can tell, a lot of, like for instance, I'm feeling this right here. It feels a little hollow. I mean, it, it feels like, it, it kind of feels a little cheap, but it feels a little hollow. And this is a door pull, so. But uh, for the most part, I think most people buying these cars enjoy the material feel. I think what it really is is that they like having that name. Because to tell you the truth, from the feel of the interior, this is nothing different than what you'd get in a high-end Hyundai or even a Chrysler product. Some of the Chrysler products actually look nicer than this. But, um, you know, hey, it's got that TriStar on it. And that TriStar carries a lot of name equity. And name equity is what it's all about. Got this nice pano roof. Nice pano roof. Yeah, it's a good looking car. Fold down seats work like this. Tethers for your child seats. 12 volt outlet over there. That's nice. That's a nice. I didn't notice that before. Old C class, new CL. Yeah, all this vinyl in here, they, they could slap anybody's name tag on this thing, it would be the same damn car. Checking to see how many of them fit me. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five people plus the dealer. Hmm. Yeah, typical uh, turbo four cylinder car. Our S class makes all of these cars look like so much less. Well, it looks some good looking um, front ends. My thing is those fake vents right there. I don't. Li I don't like that at all. If, if they're not going to use vents like that to vent the brakes because they don't need to be vented, then what they really need to consider doing is putting fog lights there, or you know, some kind of LED fog light or something. Other than that, you know, oh nice, very really nice. This is a uh, GLA 250, and it's one of the uh, pre-sale models. It's it's pr it's a production vehicle. It's just that uh, this one it's not on sale yet. Now, from what I've been hearing, they're saying that the uh, formatic is going to come pretty much standard for the first couple of shipments, but later on they'll be making front-wheel drive models. Now, considering all-wheel drive is uh, a luxury feature that most cars are leaving lots with now most likely the front wheel drive will obviously be cheaper but they won't sell too well cla and the gla pretty much feel the exact same way on the road i don't really notice much difference in the uh handling i really haven't noticed much difference in the ride quality i mean the gla does feel a little bit better because it has so much more tire and because it um has a different suspension but um, ultimately, these cars are going to sell simply because of the Mercedes brand and also because they're good looking cars. So if you're interested in buying one of these things, um, you know, have at it. It's not very expensive. It's less than $40,000. Where in an ML will cost you a lot more. But um, that's what you're getting. You're getting a cheaper ML. It's
Chicago? No, I bought it.